Hello, everyone. It's Steve with Aptor Owners Club. This past Friday, as expected, the U.S. House passed the Inflation Reduction Act. So the Senate passed it a week ago and um, a little less than a week ago, and the House passed it on Friday, and it's headed to Biden's desk for him to sign. The chances that he vetoes that bill is essentially zero. So the Inflation Reduction Act is going to go into law. And I searched everywhere. And I could not find that there had been any substantive changes made to the bill. So I think um, it stands, as it stands, Aptera is not getting any um, tax credit or tax break through that bill because of the four wheel, um, the minimum of four wheel clause in, in, the, uh, in the current law that has not been amended. And also they got rid of the two to three wheel auto cycle rule that would give you a partial credit. And so I think Aptera is getting no credit, uh, no tax incentive at all under this bill, which is quite unfortunate. Um, but I think because Aptera has not said that they're going to um, increase prices uh, and everyone else has increased prices, that Aptera is still a pretty good deal. Um, and so I think they'll still sell, they'll still be production limited rather than demand limited, at least for the foreseeable future. So I don't think it's hurt Aptera too much, although I think if they had gotten a tax credit, then their demand would be just through the roof. It would be insane, I think, um, because getting an Aptera for under $20,000 with a $7,500 tax break would just be an incredible deal. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. And it's very unlikely to happen. There's a couple of um, places where, you know, it could still get derailed. Um, Biden could veto it. That's highly, highly, highly unlikely. That's just not going to happen. Um, and then the EU and South Korea have lodged complaints with the World Trade Organization saying that um, the vehicle tax credit breaks uh, rules of fair trade because it um, preferentially um, hurts um, EU and other foreign companies because of the certain clauses in there about domestic manufacture and sourcing of batteries and uh, materials from uh, North American sites. So there's a couple of um, a couple of uh, articles about that. Um, so I was thinking, me personally, I need to get a car in the next year. And given um, Aptera's... Uh, trajectory right now. So they're on gamma. They're not done with it. They're working on finishing it in time for the fully charged event in September. And then they have to, you know, tweak it some more and then um, get, get to Delta, which is their production intent vehicle. And as Chris Anthony said, they did, they are planning on getting a production intent vehicle by the end of the year which I take to mean, this is my interpretation of it and purely speculation, um, is that if everything goes perfectly as planned, they will make one production intent vehicle read Delta by the end of this year. And that's if everything goes perfectly as planned. Um, and they are trying to do something that's unprecedented. They're making a very... Uh, different kind of vehicle with lots of new technology that hasn't been done. They're a new company. Um, supply chains are crazy. I mean, the chances that everything goes well is pretty low. So I would be very, very impressed. And they would be kind of lucky to get a production intent vehicle by the end of the year. But let's say they do that. Um, then they have to start their production ramp. And if you look at Rivian, Lucid, Archimoto, they have all had serious problems with their production ramp. Um, Lucid said that they were going to um, produce more than 20,000 vehicles this year. They are nowhere close to that, and they're revising them down to um, 12 000 to 14,000. Rivian also said they were going to produce lots of vehicles. They have produced a total of um, 7, 000, about almost 8,000 vehicles. Uh, since last year. And these two are two highly capitalized companies. They have billions of dollars and lots of resources on their hands, and they are having a, a difficult time reaching their production ramp um, predictions. And then Archimoto has been producing for two years, and they opened this new ramp facility, which was supposed to speed up their production tremendously. They're up to six vehicles a day. 
and the Archimoto is a pretty simple vehicle to manufacture and they're up to six vehicles a day. Um, Aptera is saying that they are going to ramp to 40 vehicles a day. Um, I don't personally see that happening uh, anytime real soon. I think that they're going to have to tweak out the production intent vehicle. They're going to have to get their supply chains in order. Um, I would personally be very impressed if they delivered a thousand vehicles by this time next year. So um, I'm gonna, we should all mark this video and see how wrong I was a year from now. I hope I'm wrong and they're producing very, very well. But just being realistic, I think if unless you're one of the first, you know, few hundred orders, um, you're one of the paradigm orders of the 400 mile battery, you're probably not getting your vehicle in the next year. Um, I ordered fairly early on and I think I would be very, very happy to get it by the end of 2023. And I'm of course buying one and I'm, I'll be happy to get it whenever they deliver it to me. Um, but I think that it's going to be towards the end of 2023 and I need a vehicle before then. So I was thinking, what vehicle should I get now that this is passed? It's very likely that the cheapest vehicle is going to be um it's going to be the uh, bolt i think the bolt if any car gets the um the tax credit it's going to be the bolt the bolt is made in the u.s it's a u.s company and the batteries are sourced out of Ho um, holland michigan uh, lg chem makes it out of holland michigan and they're expanding that uh th that job and their Ultium battery platform um, has a battery management system that lets it use different uh, chemistries in the same pack. So they could source from many different places. So they're much more flexible. And I think they could find um, sources that are from free trade countries uh, f much easier than other countries because of the way that their Ultium pack works. So I think that um, the... Bolt is most likely the, the car that's going to benefit from the Inflation Reduction Act the most. And so the Bolt uh, EV is 26000 The Bolt EUV, I think, is twenty eight or 29000 That makes the Bolt EUV like a little over 20000 which is a pretty good deal. Um, so seriously looking at that, actually. Uh, the um, new... Uh, let's see. The new, I think... Where was that? Oh yeah, this is the other car I was thinking about getting is the Toyota Sienna. It's a hybrid. It's a okay. Minivans are not sexy, but um, one of the things I really want to do is go camping. I, that's what I would do with the Aptera is go camping in the thing. And with the Toyota Sienna, it's a hybrid, so you can use climate control. It'll burn a little gas to recharge the battery. It's kind of like a giant Prius. Um, it gets 36 miles per gallon. It's pretty good. So I've seen a lot of videos of people turning this into campers and that's pretty awesome uh, the other one that could get the um the credit would be the ford f1 lightning the batteries are made in georgia by sk innovation sk innovation is also a south korean company so the south korean company uh south korea we have a free trade agreement with um they had a little spat with lg chem because they stole some um trade secrets from LG Chem and then they had a big lawsuit and then they ended up paying LG Chem I think like 1.2 billion dollars in damages or something um, and they reached the settlement and yeah okay here we go 1.8 billion dollars and they can sell their um, batteries and LG Chem is like building a second battery plant um, possibly in Tennessee and I think that um, where is this thing I think that uh, that one would probably get the the tax credit as well, because Ford is also an American company, and so they probably if they if anyone got waivers, uh, I think uh, Chevrolet and Ford would probably be the first to get waivers. I mean, I doubt they would give waivers to foreign companies first, so those two would be the best. But I don't really need a truck, so I'm not thinking about getting a Ford F-150. Um, Tesla probably could get it as well but i just don't really like tesla's um right to repair stance which is one of the things i really like about the aptera so i probably not going to get a tesla maybe i will 
that's so Tesla Model 3, Bolt EUV, Toyota Sienna, maybe a VW ID4 because that's made in Tennessee as well. Um, but the ID4, I think it's like $38,000. So it's quite a bit more expensive than the Bolt EUV. I don't know if it's worth $10,000 more than a Bolt EUV. So um, I think I'm looking at either a Model 3, a Bolt EUV, or um, a Toyota Sienna. That's to tide me over until the Aptera delivers. Hopefully by the end of 23, maybe early 2024. Um, so I think a lot of things have to go really well uh, for Aptera to reach their um, production targets. You know, I, they need to produce as soon as possible, I think, mainly because uh, as soon as they show production, I think more investors will uh, be interested in them as a serious company because they've shown that they've gotten to production. I think it's a big milestone that many startup EV companies never make it to. So if they make it to that, I think big investors will be interested and they need they need capital. And the faster they they're burning capital right now, they they're burning capital and capital is hard to come by right now. So the longer they take, they just have to pay all their staff and everything, pay for rent, pay for electricity. So every day they're burning money. They're just like on a cash burn until they reach production. And once they reach production, first of all, they'll get some revenue from selling the vehicles. And secondly, they'll prove that they're a serious company and serious investors will come in and then they can get more capital. But if they don't produce, they'll run out of capital and that'll be a bad thing because that's what happened the first time around. Okay, well, tell me what you guys think about my predictions about the production ramp um, and delivery times for Aptera. You think I'm kind of being too pessimistic, too optimistic maybe. Um, what do you think the best vehicle to get at this point is if you're looking for kind of an EV hybrid? Um, would you get a Bolt EUV? Would you get a Ford F-150? Would you get a Cybertruck, Tesla Model 3, Toyota Sienna? Um, I guess it depends on your use case. I just kind of want a vehicle for... Um, commuting and for camping, basically. Um, and then I would get the Aptera whenever they put it out. I'm going to get that thing, be it 2023, 2024, 2025. I'm in line. I'm waiting for the thing. Whenever they make it, I'm buying it. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Kind of a little bit of a ramble about uh, the bill. But yeah, I think that, that bill passed. And unfortunately, we didn't get the tax credit. And I don't think that's happening. Um, unless someone knows some information I don't know. I looked pretty hard and searched for the text of it, and I couldn't find any, any place where the house changed it. All right, well, thanks for watching, guys. Comments below. Again, thanks to our sponsoring members, and um, have a great day.